In 1833, near here, a place that was known at the time as Cold Bath Fields, a police constable of the recently formed Metropolitan Police, Robert Cully, was stabbed while trying to break up a working class political demonstration. The demonstration had been banned by the then Secretary of State. Cully was the first officer to die on duty and the coroner's jury that was convened was under huge political pressure to find a verdict to satisfy both the government and the newly formed police. Instead, they found a verdict of justifiable homicide. The jury had silver medals struck in their honour. They were taken on a boat ride from the centre of the city of London down to Twickenham, where they had cannons fired in their honour. They were held to be defenders of liberty and freedom. In 2005, here in Stockwell, armed officers boarded a train and shot Jan Charles de Menezes dead. They shot him with hollow point bullets, seven times in the head and once in the shoulder. His body was apparently unrecognisable. He'd been flagged by surveillance officer for having Mongolian eyes. The gold commander of the operation, Cressida Dick, was the next year in 2006 promoted to deputy assistant commissioner. No officer involved in the shooting or in organising the operation has ever or will ever face disciplinary charges or criminal charges. How did we reach this situation? Between those two events there lies a long history of the transformation of powers given to the police. Uh, that includes a, a vast increase in powers of surveillance, uh, a huge proliferation of armed units and huge extensions to the powers of arrest and detention. Now, Along the course of that growth there lie countless bodies, very often the bodies of young black men uh, who've suffered for the growth, the growth of police powers. And the question is, how did this happen? You know, why are the police not held accountable? And what, in fact, are the police for? Well, for one thing, the instruments of accountability are useless. The IPCC routinely avoids holding officers to account for deaths in custody or police shootings. In 2008, over 100 lawyers resigned from the IPCC's advisory board over its inability to hold to account cases of corruption or abuse. So you've got to ask, why is there never any question about the police's routine use of misinformation and even lies to cover their tracks? Well, you might think, the police solve crime. Actually, the vast majority of crimes are unsolved by the police. The solution rate for all crime hovers at around 25 to 27%, and a huge number of those are crimes where they've arrested a kid with a little bit of cannabis in his pocket. Uh, in fact, if you look at the crimes that really affect people, stuff like property theft or burglary, solution rates hover at around 18%, and the huge majority of those are self-solvers. Those are crimes where the culprit is already there at the scene. So in the vast majority of crime, the police play simply an administrative role. We need to talk about undercover police as well. That's police who infiltrated environmental movements, peace movements, even campaigns of families of those who've been affected by police violence. We also need to talk about those police who undertook relationships with women while they were undercover, who lied to them about who they were and what, what they were there for. Uh, they left one activist feeling, in her words, like she'd been raped by the state. What would one of those gathered that day here in Cold Bath Fields say if you told them about all this? And perhaps they tell you about their fears that the plague of blue locusts, as they called them, that had been recently visited on their communities, were there less to solve crime than to keep order and to keep them quiet. I mean, taking that role over from the army, whose recent role in massacring people at Peterloo uh, had rendered them unsuitable for the purpose. What would they say, I wonder, if you told them that young men were routinely harassed on the street for the colour of their skin? What would they say if you told them that since 1990 there had been 1,400 deaths in contact with the police, with barely a prosecution brought, let alone a conviction? What would they say if you told them that the armed officers responsible for so many of these deaths had threatened to resign en masse if such a prosecution were ever brought? What would they say if you told them that the man in charge of one of these police forces, the biggest of these police forces, thought that he should have the right to take your name and retain your photo and your details and even your DNA, despite you having committed no crime? Wouldn't they say, we were right? We were right to be suspicious. To list all the crimes of the police would require a video a hundred times longer than this one. But it's notable to me that the only case, and I mean the only case, to provoke hand-wringing in high places recently has been Plebgate. And that's the case where a police officer was engaged in a minor lie about a cabinet minister. Is there any clearer demonstration of who matters and who doesn't in this country? Police lie routinely on the stand in courts across the country. When people die at their hands, they lose the evidence. 
They collaborate on witness statements. And when caught out, they just plead that they misremembered. Hillsborough, Orgreave, the venal private army of CID in the 1920s, corruption scandals exposed in 1969, the corruption scandals involving the drug squad, the robbery squad, everything around Stoke Newington Police Station in the 1970s and the 1980s. Let's remember the Maguire Seven, the Birmingham Six, Stefan Kishko, John Stalker in the RUC case, right the way through to the present day, to the scandal surrounding the spying on of the family of Stephen Lawrence, uh, the Daniel Morgan case, a case of investigation into police corruption, a guy was murdered investigating it, still unsolved, evidence goes missing all the time. Let's remember some of the names. Sean Rigg, Kingsley Burrell, Cherry Gross, Cynthia Jarrett, Joy Gardner, Senny Lewis, Azel Rodney, Mark Duggan, the list of names is very long. Inquest, inquiry, whitewash.